Hello everyone and welcome to another video presentation. We are going to be talking today about um, just a general overview of the profession of physical therapy. This is kind of the uh, what have I gotten myself into lecture. And what we'll be doing over a couple of video, separate videos, um, we're going to start first with the history of physical therapy, talk a little bit about the legal definitions, and then we are going to look at the role of the three practitioners within physical therapy. The physical therapist, the physical therapist assistant, and then the physical therapy aid. So sit back and uh, enjoy the presentation. So we're going to actually start out with a little video just to kind of set the, set the tone here. So we'll get this pulled up. Versus bacon. Imagine a life with limited motion. Feeling like a prisoner in a body that just won't respond. Knowing that what once brought great pleasure is now filled with pain. Having to pop pills every morning just to make it through the day. Knowing that the next step is a knife. I found myself in unfamiliar territory. Struggling with the simplest of tasks. I felt robbed. It just wasn't fair. As if my dreams were passing me by. Until I met my physical therapist. I had doubts at first. The frustration of my limitations made me jaded. With each visit, my physical therapist helped me to understand how to restore my body and regain my motion. It's like she became a partner in my journey, teaching me new ways to move in order to regain my freedom. When I wanted to quit, she pushed me to move on. When I felt I couldn't get any better, he encouraged me to reach a little deeper. It's hard work, but week by week, I began to regain confidence in my step and pride of my accomplishment. Now the simple pleasures are back in my life. My regular routine seems normal again. I love having my freedom back. I'm back in the game, and it feels good. Sure, life may still throw a few obstacles my way, but now I know I can overcome those challenges and move forward with my life. Thanks to my hero. Thanks to my hero. Thanks to my hero. Thanks to my hero. So hopefully that gets you all excited to be in the physical therapist assistant program and knowing that you'll be uh, somebody's hero one day. So we're going to go kind of step back a little bit, talk about some boring things, but we are going to actually look at the legal definition of physical therapy. And to, to do that, each the profession of physical therapy is regulated uh, on a state-by-state -state basis. So we are going to look at one definition of physical therapy, which is in the Wisconsin State Practice Act for Physical Therapy. And we have other courses where you're going to be looking at this in, in more depth. But for right now, we'll just look at Wisconsin's um, definition. If you would practice in another state, I can feel pretty certain that the definitions are going to be fairly similar, but uh, there are a little bit of differences from state to state as far as the rules under which physical therapists and physical therapist assistants practice. But anyway, the definition is in four parts, and so this is the first part. And, and I just want to emphasize I'm not going to ask you to try to reiterate this on a word-for-word -word basis. I would like you to understand in general, be able to describe in your own words what physical therapy does, and this is um, a basis for you to start developing that. So. The first part here talks about uh, kind of the examination and the setting up the treatment plan process. So we examine, evaluate, or test individuals 
and with certain kinds of problems. So mechanical, so movement, physiological, something like maybe cardiac or diabetes, or developmental impairments, like things children are born with, um, functional limitations related to physical movement and mobility, in other words, inability to do physical activities, a disability, or other movement-related health conditions. So if we just look at that first part, it's really trying to focus physical therapy in on really anything affecting the human body that's going to negatively impact the ability to move. So it's always movement related, it's all about movement, but it, it, it could be anything in the body, pain, illness, injury, um, stroke, th something like that, that's affected movement. And then we go on to the last part, in order to determine a diagnosis, so physical therapists diagnose problems, a prognosis, what does prognosis mean? Right, it means, you know, how, what, are, are you going to get better? How much better are you going to get? How long will it take? And then plan of therapeutic intervention or to assess the ongoing effects of intervention. So we're going to set up a plan. So an intervention is a, thera a therapeutic intervention is a, is a plan or an activity, a treatment that we apply. Um, or we are also doing all this examination and evaluation to kind of reassess how, how are things going. So that's the first part of the definition. Second part, alleviating impairments or functional limitations by instructing patients or designing, implementing, or modifying therapeutic interventions. Okay, so we address, we've figured out what these movement problems are, we've set up a plan, and now we're actually going to implement the plan and apply these treatments to a person. If we look at the third element, another reason that we, another role of physical therapy and another reason we would see a person in physical therapy would be to reduce the risk of injury, impairment, functional limitation, or disability. So we want to do risk reduction, um, prevention of, of problems, and we also want to promote and maintain fitness, health, and quality of life. We do that across all ages, so we see infants, we see um, adults, we see very old people. Those people could be relatively healthy and just want to improve their function, or they could be ill and want to restore their function. And then lastly, um, under the realm of physical therapy would also be included administrative or consultative roles or research that's related to anything movement, physical therapy related. So again, that's a lot. It's a kind of a mouthful, but it gives a pretty good overview. I think it's a very thorough description of physical therapy, and, and hopefully it helps you get excited because there is a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of variability and variety in the profession of physical therapy. So if you think about what you want to do yourself, if you want to work with children, if you want to work with Olympic athletes, if you want to work with older adults, if you want to work in a hospital setting, if you want to work in a, in a school system, if you want to work in an outpatient clinic, all those things are possible under the profession of physical therapy. And I think that's what's really exciting and has made it, it really is the best career in the world. So you should be really happy that you're in it. We're going to look a little bit back now into some of the history and if we look at some of the treatments that we apply, those treatments have been around, you know, for millennia. So if we look at the ancient civilizations, you know, they used massage and they used water and they used heat and cold. I think those things have been around forever. But simply applying a massage or putting someone in a whirlpool does not by itself constitute physical therapy. And so when we look at professions with with whom we share some of these interventions like athletic training and, and massage and chiropractic, you know, those professions are distinct because of the way that the, the focus that they have and the way in which they apply those treatments. And so that's why I think it's helpful to kind of look at back at that definition that we just went through to get the understanding that for physical therapy 
it's all about restoring normal movement and that we have many, many tools in our toolkit. We have a very broad arsenal um, of things that we use to, in order to restore that movement. So while a lot of these um, treatments and things have been around that we use for, for eons, looking at physical therapy as a scientific discipline uh, really began in, in the 19th century, and that was in Europe. So Mary McMillan uh, is a physical therapist, well actually, she, she was kind of what we think of as our first physical therapist. She was actually a reconstruction aide in, in World War I through the U.S. Army. And so she went to England and studied under the physical therapist there and then brought that back to the U.S. And so she's really credited with starting the profession in the United States. Um, so in World War I, uh, this is not World War I, in World War I there were, they were usually nurses, um, and they were formed into reconstruction aids. So World War I was probably the first modern war where people were expected to actually recover from their wounds and be able to go back and lead a productive life. So the reconstructive aid, reconstruction aids were developed to um, do exercise and to do crutch training and to apply electrical stimulation and massage and things like that to help soldiers who were injured recover from their war wounds in return. And so that's what Mary McMillan did. She, she started that program and um, she also started the American Physical Therapy Association in 1921. Um, you see here a little bit of the history. We're going to go through just some historical slides here. So this looks more to me, this still looks like a um, medical situation, but um, probably closer to World War II. Um, here's a World War I reconstruction aids. And so again, you can see in the lower left corner here, this person is applying an electrical stimulation to this man's muscles um, in a little window through a cast. So his arm is in a cast, and she's applying electrical stimulation to the muscles within that are mobilized within the cast. Um, it looks like she might be doing a similar thing up here to his leg. So we have to remember, electricity was a fairly new thing back in the in the teens. Um, of the 20th century, so there was some very cutting-edge technology here. Uh, again, this is moving forward a little bit. Um, we do a lot of these same things, though, in a more modern way. Uh, this looks to me like a, a type of heat treatment, an infrared lamp, and this again is electrical stimulation. You can see she's palpating. What, what, thinking where the probe is and where she's palpating, what muscle do you think she's trying to stimulate? Yep, she's trying to stimulate the anterior tibialis. Another thing that played a big role uh, in the history of physical therapy and its development, particularly related to manual muscle testing, was polio. Uh, polio was, of course, you probably are aware, a disease transmitted by the polio virus, and it wasn't until the 1950s that there was a, a vaccine for this virus. So before then, polio was unfortunately not uncommon and it, it did it often affect children because children were kind of in areas where it was easily transmissible. Um, but it caused, or causes unfortunately, because it's not completely eradicated, it causes um, kind of patchy paralysis or it can be complete paralysis. It's quite variable because the polio virus goes into the anterior horn cell, the motor neurons in the anterior horn of the spinal cord, and, and that's where it kind of lives. And so it destroys those motor neurons. And so it just depends on how much of the virus the person's exposed to, how many motor cells die, how many are left to regenerate. So that's really where muscle testing, manual muscle testing developed because we needed to be able to monitor the person's function as they were getting worse and as they were getting better. So remember, you know, no MRIs to go in and look at uh, the state of someone's spinal cord or assess what was going on. So we did it all from a clinical exam. Um, a lot of hydrotherapy was used for polio, um, just as, again as we continue to use today for people with spinal cord injury or other weaknesses. The water, the buoyancy of the water, the warmth of the water, 
made it very easy to move and so we would use hydrotherapy a lot as a way to uh, help people exercise. I just love this picture. Adeline, I don't know who she is or where she is now, but she just looks like she's full of compassion and warmth and humor. Holy cow. Um, so in the 1960s, again, we continued, uh, I think there was a lot of reliance still on a lot of what we call physical modalities or physical agents. Uh, again, this is a diathermy machine. It's a form of deep heat and we uh, will continue to use that to a certain extent. Uh, I think there's probably a shift to make sure that, um, that the application of the physical agents isn't the major element. It's, it's an adjunct to the other things that we do. So you would never go into physical therapy and just get diathermy or just get a hot pack and massage and, and have that be your physical therapy session. There has to be some portion of that treatment that's focused on actually restoring the function. So whether it's exercise or retraining in a technique, um, that's really the physical therapy part. Um, in the 60s, saw uh, legislation that advocated for the rights of children with disabilities to be able to participate in, in public education. And so in, in a way to do that, uh, we saw a lot of physical therapy then being introduced and delivered in the school system so that children could take advantage of education. And that is still the role of physical therapy in the school system today. It's not, you know, my daughter's had a broken leg, so she wouldn't get physical therapy in the school system because of that broken leg. Um, that would get treated as a medical condition. So we would see children, or we see children now in the school system as a way for them to be able to, again, participate in education. And so physical therapy for those children in the school system is a supportive um, service aimed toward the educational process. And then here's our last little guy. He's also in the school system working, of course, on his ambulation. So I have been talking to Eileen. I'm hoping we can really uh, restore some of these great outfits. Um, you know, the, the white dresses. Um, these I, I like the hats a lot. And then if you look on the sleeves, there's like um, like little cufflinks on the sleeves. I really think those are pretty stylish. So hopefully, you know, for when you go into clinical in January, you'll get to wear some of these stylish things as well. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap up this, this part of the video, and you can go on to the next part where we're going to talk about the physical therapist's role and function. So let me just get to the end.